Hi friends and neighbors, somebody in the comments section asked me to do a video about depression. Now a couple of years ago when I was writing for the Suicide Girls website, I did an article for them about depression and somebody immediately got mad and said that I needed to qualify and mention that I'm not a trained psychologist and that I have no business talking about depression or something like that. Okay, so I'm not a trained psychologist. I have never even been the patient of a trained psychologist. I was a patient for a brief time of a sort of psychiatric social worker when I was in Japan. That only lasted about a month. So that's the closest I've come to knowing anything about psychology as it's practiced by the psychiatric profession in the West today. Now having said that, I have been a person who has suffered from depression most of my life. I don't really know what sort of clinical diagnosis my depression would have because I never went to see a clinician about it. When I was in my teens, in those days, it kind of wasn't the thing to do. They hadn't really started sending teenagers to, to seek psychiatrists and get prescribed Ritalin and all that stuff. Uh, and then by the time I got in my 20s, when it was that time, I couldn't afford it. So, you know, I was a poor punk rock musician and I couldn't go to see anybody about it, so I didn't know. I was kind of forced to figure it out myself, I suppose. Now, depression for me kind of comes and goes. It even does it today, but it was much worse in the past. And I think the Zazen had something to do with how it's become better and easier to deal with. In the past, what would happen is I would go through these cycles of becoming continuously, well, maybe I should m represent it with a downstroke here, of becoming more and more and more and more depressed until I, I felt like I was bottoming out, like I couldn't take it anymore. And during those episodes, I would feel like committing suicide or all kinds of things. And uh, so far, I haven't done it. But uh, they would always break at some point and kind of things would go back to normal and I didn't understand the cycle but I kind of got used to noticing that it was a cycle. I started doing Zazen when I was in my late teens as anybody who's watched these videos knows and this, this was a time when the depression was probably the strongest and what the Zazen enabled me to do was to watch depression happen in real time and this was incredibly valuable because I was no longer just trying to figure it out by thinking about it or, or reading a book about it, but I would actually watch myself go through these cycles. So I sat every day, including days when I was so depressed I didn't want to do anything, but I'd still do Zazen anyway because I could kind of see some use to it, some value to it by then. And as I sat, what I noticed about depression is that it's like all kinds of feelings. A feeling comes up and you don't know why. You, you don't know where it comes from or how it came into being, but it's there. And, and you're kind of like plopped into this world where the feeling is existing already. That's kind of how it felt. And I think what we normally do is we try to figure it out. So you're feeling depressed and then you try to think of why are you feeling depressed and then you can kind of add up in your minds all the reasons that you have for being depressed which just add to that and make you more and more depressed. Or you try to do the opposite. You try to say, well, I shouldn't be depressed. I did this too a lot. Uh, and, and think of all the reasons you shouldn't be depressed but that makes you even more depressed because you're just depressed about the fact that you're depressed and it just kind of builds up in itself. And the best way I saw to interrupt that is to just stop doing that. Now, this is easier said than done. Uh, what would happen was I'd find myself being depressed and then adding thoughts to those, those thoughts of depression, describing the depression to myself and, and doing all of that stuff. And then once I noticed I was doing that, I'd try to go back to, the, to just sitting which is what they always tell you to do in Zazen. So no matter what happens, you just keep on sitting and keep on paying attention to that. Pay attention to your posture, pay attention to 
the surroundings you're in, pay attention to the here and now aspect of it and try to be as fully present in this moment as possible. So without trying to push the depression away, I just would allow it to be there, neither pushing it away nor adding to it. So just letting it be. And as I would let it be, I would start to see that it's it's just a feeling, it's just a thought, it it's one of many things going on right now. There's other things going on. There's the air rushing past my face, there's the dogs barking outside, there's birds chirping, there's a guy coming in my front gate, that's what that buzzing you hear is. There's all kinds of things going on other than the depression. So they're all they all become, uh, how would I say, equally weighted. So, so there's no more reason to, to, to sit and observe this depression and be more with this depression than there is to observe the person coming through the gate and, and get into the sound of that or something like that. Now, as I said before, this is easier said than done. You can, you can describe it to somebody, but in my own case, it took, it took a while. It took a matter of years for this to really sink in. At first, you're just kind of going, oh, what am I going to do with this? And, and after a while, you start to see it for what it is, and then you can, you can do something about it. So I think this practice can be good for somebody with depression. Now, if you have serious, serious depression, I'm not recommending that you throw away your medicine or you stop seeing your therapist or any of that. But I think this practice can help. And maybe at some point you can get rid of your meds and you can stop seeing your shrink. Maybe. I don't know. But, but for now, just keep everything as it is. Keep everything that works working and don't give up on anything and throw your whole life into just doing zazen uh, but it's it's a good addition i think the depression for me it hasn't gone away it's just become manageable and it's become pretty easily manageable but still still it comes up and for example just yesterday i was walking around hollywood the the location the part of la hollywood not hollywood a few miles west of here that's Hollywood and I don't know I was tired or something or maybe I, I couldn't find what I wanted at amoeba music or something and I just started to feel the depression again and and as it always happens because I thought about suicide so much for so much of my life then there's a thought that goes Ooh, kill yourself kill yourself but Nowadays, rather than regarding that thought as something that I ought to act on, I just look at it as, okay, there's that thought again. It's like if somebody else walked by me and said, kill yourself, I wouldn't, I'd be like, yeah, fuck you. Uh, it, it, same, I can do that now for myself. I don't really concern myself so much with what I think. It doesn't matter. And that has been useful, and that has been the main thing I've gotten from the Zazen practice, is to understand that my thoughts are just thoughts. And anybody can say this, and I read it 150 bazillion times before I ever got it, but your thoughts are just thoughts. There's just some kind of noises going on up in your head or wherever it happens, and it doesn't matter. It's not you. It doesn't mean that if you think a thing, you must do it, or if it's the real you telling you to do this thing. It's none of that. Uh, you can just let all of those thoughts go and regard them as just more noise. But it takes years of practice to get to that point. So don't expect it to happen the first time you do zazen, or the first week you do zazen, or the first month, or the first year. It might take a long time. But once you get it, once you really start to understand that your thoughts are just thoughts, it's incredibly freeing because none of your thoughts matter. A thought of depression, you can just go, oh, yeah, another thought of depression. A thought of killing yourself, you go, oh, just another thought of killing myself. doesn't matter. 
the caveat there is that all the pleasant thoughts are the same way. A thought of like, I'm so happy is just, there's another thought. The thought of I'm in love is just another thought. The thought of I'm going to go to get ice cream, just another thought, doesn't matter. Uh, you, you regard them all the same way. You're not trying to hold on to the good ones and push away the bad ones. You're just trying to let them all be of the same weight. And that's the only practice I've found that works for my depression. Like I said, not a psychiatrist, not qualified to talk about this, except in case of my own life. I guess my own life makes me qualified to talk about my own life. So there you go. Little video about depression. If you want to help alleviate my depression, you can become a Patreon and send me donations or send donations through PayPal. There's going to be information below this that shows you the links. I really appreciate that. We are also doing a fundraiser for the Angel City Zen Center. They need your money too. Remember, none of the money you send to the Angel City Zen Center goes to me, so I'd prefer that you don't switch from me to the Angel City Zen Center, because last time it seemed like a lot of people did that, and I started not getting donations anymore. Uh, but I do want to support them, so please check them out. Uh, links below. Thanks a lot. Bye.